So beautiful, so powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bart and I am the most well-known butterfly and moth breeder on the internet. Famously, I breed a lot of death's head hawk moth. They are the internet's most favorite species. Despite that, I don't have many breeding tutorials on this species yet. This is because so many other YouTubers have made tutorials on how to breed this species. For me it always felt a bit redundant. But maybe I will give you some tips and tricks today. And today I'm going to show you how to feed the death's head hawk moth. Among other butterflies and moths, death's head hawk moths are actually unique. Because they feed on honey in the wild. They are adapted to infiltrate beehives and feed on the honey. What you have to do is get yourself some bottle caps and make a mix of honey and water. Now, it is wise to add a little bit more water than honey. Let's film this in a way so that we don't cast a shade. Fifty, fifty or less, I think it's acceptable. Here's some of the honey due to the lighting. Unfortunately, it can be a bit hard to see because it creates a shadow, which is actually kind of annoying. Next, what you want to do is you want to add some water. It's right, folks. They want a mix of water and honey to sustain them. This is important. Yeah, I may spill a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Next, what you can do if you want to stir it a little, make sure that it's actually mixing. I'm not doing this with, this with professional equipment, as you can see. But hey, if it works, it works. That's my saying. So next what you do is you grab one of the death's head hog moths. And you kind of have to force them a little bit, but not too much. You cannot force an insect to eat if it's not hungry. But at the same time, in captivity, they tend to not find their food unless you help them. So what you can do is when it comes to handling them, you can grab these moths by the thorax, which is the only safe part of the body that is safe to handle. Don't grab them by the wings, of course. And then gently bring the moths toward the bottle caps that you use to feed them. Now the proboscis of the death's head hog moth is unique in the butterfly and moth world because it's very short and stubby. It's been adapted to drink honey, so you can shove a stick below the proboscis here, then extend it manually into the honey water mixture. If the moth is hungry, it will keep feeding. Can you see that? So this moth right here is feeding. If they are not hungry, they usually typically just walk away because they are not interested. Don't force the moths too much if they make it clear that they are not hungry. There you go. It's kind of silly, but this is how it goes. Now, if you guys want a proper death set hog moth breeding tutorial, write it in the comments. I may actually be tempted to make one someday. Can you see this proboscis action, guys? This is what feeding looks like for a death set hog moth. Essentially, right now it's drinking. That's what it's doing. Can you see that? And if you're doing this, it's good news. It means it likes the food. Now, if you guys are interested in a breeding tutorial on how to breed the death's head hog moth, then leave a comment. I may actually be tempted to make one. Thing is, so many other YouTubers have made tutorials on how to breed the death's head hog moth. Maybe it's redundant, but I've also looked at some of these tutorials and to be honest, they, all of them are pretty bad quality. I think that I could do it better. So maybe I'll do it one day. Maybe that sounds arrogant, but just being honest. 
A lot of people are making videos about this hobby, but many of them don't really know what they're talking about. Let's be real. Not that I am an, not that I am an expert that knows everything, of course, right? I don't own the truth. I make mistakes too, sometimes, but... Yeah, that's another story. So, as you can see, these are feeding. I know, because they don't run away. They're just sitting here. And if you do this well, if you do it gently with care, it doesn't hurt the moths. There's a lot of people on the internet that just assume that handling and touching moths is harmful to them, which is actually not true. If you have some expertise and you know what you're doing and you know how you can safely touch these animals, it is harmless. And as you can hear, they, could, they tend to be squeaking a little bit if touched. That's a natural defense mechanism that they have. Kind of silly, kind of cute in a way. Some people find it scary. Look, they're having dinner. So here we got almost the whole family drinking honey, water. Isn't that brilliant? In my opinion, this species is very easy to breed. Let me add some more water because they drink a lot. Wow, they drank almost all of that. In my opinion, this species is easy to breed. It's uh, beginner friendly. If you want to know how to breed butterflies and moths in general, my channel is the best way to get started. I don't think anybody has filmed as many species as I have. Um, I do have to say. There you go. Is this one finished? Or you're not hungry anymore, buddy? It is a lovely species, if you ask me. It's very relaxing and they can live for a long time. These moths in captivity tend to live for about four weeks. But if you're lucky, they can live up to two and a half months, which is my record. Some of the ones that I owned that lived for the longest time, they lived like for Literally two and a half years, oh sorry, two and a half months, <laughs> not years, that would be crazy. Now, these moths can actually drink a lot in a very short time. You know, they, they will start to stop being interested in feeding after like a few minutes already. As you can see, some of them are already wanting to fly away. Don't be fooled, they probably have a full stomach at this point, like they can drink a very large quantity of fluid in just a few minutes. Now again, sorry for the awkward lighting. Maybe in the future I will make a, a setup with better lighting so that it's better visible for some of my viewers. But this is a homemade channel, guys. It's not a Mr. Beast production, all right? They don't have a studio to film this. It's just me in my bedroom. But uh, yeah, this is what we do. How we feed the death set hog moth. And here's a little tutorial for if some of you, if you ever get to breed this species in captivity. What's really cool is they can squeak loudly. Let me show you that. Now I've raised all of these moths myself since they were caterpillars. And the caterpillar is another thing. The caterpillar of this species is incredibly gorgeous. You can feed them plants such as tomato, potato, nightshade, privet, olive, ash tree. There's a lot of plants that they are willing to eat. And if you look closely, sorry for moving the camera, but if you look closely, you can see they have this amazing yellow color, color pattern on their abdomen. It really is one of incredible species of hog moth. That being said, the species is very popular in pop culture. It is not completely unwarranted because it is a very unique and beautiful species in many ways. That being said, there's also a lot more beautiful species that don't receive a fraction of the attention. I guess it's because they were featured in like Silence of the Lambs and Edgar Allan Poe, I think wrote a poem or something about the species. So obviously they're going to get a bit more attention than most moths simply because of pop culture. But I'm telling you, there's thousands of amazing moth species in this world, and I actually breed them. It's both, it's both my job and my hobby. I've made it into my work, actually. And if you want to know how to do that and why I do it, then please consider checking out my YouTube channel, folks.
there's way too many moth videos on my channel and they're waiting to be watched. They're waiting for an audience that's ready to watch them and enjoy them because I put a lot of time and energy and love and passion into these videos. See, some of them are still drinking. Let's put some zoom on that. See, this one is really hungry. As you can see, it's really drinking a lot. Look at that. It's enjoying the honey. Some of the moths don't feed much. If they're not hungry, they will feed for a minute. If, uh, and if they don't want food at all, actually, sometimes they just outright refuse. If the moth refuses, don't force it, all right? If it's hungry, it will feed. If it refuses, it just means that for whatever reason, it just doesn't want food at the moment, which is okay. I'm sure there's times in your life where your friend wants to have lunch, but you feel full. You've already had lunch, who knows, you know? Just, just to keep this in mind, the feeding of them is volitional in some way. They just need assistance in helping them find their food in captivity, but they are not being forced. I'm just making sure that they get the nutrients they need and the energy. As you can see, it really energizes them. Really makes them move a lot. See? That's because they're having all the sugar. And after they're done feeding, they probably want to fly away and do their moth business, you know, which is probably finding a a partner, finding somebody to mate with. Moths are very sexual creatures in a way. That's a sentence I never expected to say out loud on a YouTube video, but it's true. Moths are sexual creatures. They either devote a lot of time in finding nectar or food, or they spend their time trying to find a mate. Sometimes defending territory, defend, depending on the species, but most of the time it's very straightforward. It's either food or sex. Yeah, sounds crude, but the life of animals is a bit crude in some ways. But that's just how nature is, isn't it? Well, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I will make a few more tutorials if you guys like it in the future. Um, preferably with better lighting. Hope you enjoyed this short little tutorial. After feeding, I shall put them back in their enclosure. Hopefully they will make babies for me and we'll have the next generation of beautiful moths.